And so when people are like, oh, like, I love you. I'd love to like date you. I'm like, you probably wouldn't. You probably would not want that. <laughs> Uh, and I let them know straight up because I would never want to like participate in a parasocial relationship. It's toxic. Super psyched to have you on. I'm excited. I've seen your videos for a while now. So I'm glad that you reached out to me. Yeah. Thanks for letting me wiggle my way on here. Let's get into it. The dollar beam. <laughs> That's something I didn't know about. Like I, I obviously heard like the term before, but I didn't really realize the context of it. And so when you had said yeah. something, I was like, Cause I never, I don't think I really use that at all. I don't know why I just like, it's not in my vocabulary, but I have friends that like will use it and, and stuff like that. So like, what's, what's pressing you about the dollar beam? Yeah. So like, I want to preface this with saying like, anytime I criticize this, I'm not criticizing like the lesbians on the app that are using it because yeah. it's no fault for them. It's yeah. more of like the um, systemic like gotcha. part behind it that I'm criticizing mm -hmm. So I don't know where it started or who started it, but with the text to speech caption. Mm -hmm. So we always like censor lesbian, which is bullshit because it's like contributing to the erasure of the yep. word lesbian and the identity lesbian. Yep. But I understand why people feel the need to do it because they're fearful that their video won't blow up if, if they yeah. like have the word lesbian or gay, whatever. Um, so I guess someone censored it by doing like the dollar sign and so when the text to speech read it out it was like the dollar sign bean and everyone in the com i remember seeing the video and like everyone in the comments was like that's so fucking funny like the dollar yeah. sign bean i love it i'm a the dollar sign bean and then it just took off mm -hmm. and once again like no fault to that creator or the people but then i was like scrolling and i saw someone made a crew neck like merch that had the dollar sign bean on it and one yeah. it's kind of weird to make merch on something that's like not your own intellectual property yeah so my issue with it is that it's one, like I said before, it's part of like erasure of lesbian and the identity. And it's also like giving into the fact that we have to censor ourselves. And TikTok is a great app. We all have this like amazing platform on it, but it's so incredibly flawed in terms of like, I have reported countless amounts of homophobic, racist, misogynistic, like rape culture videos that just they oh, yeah. refuse to take down. But if, but I had a video taken down once because I reference the word strap not even strap on just like strap yeah. and it was taken down and so a lot of like gay content is, is taken down and it's censored so I feel like the oh, yeah. more that we entertain the idea of having to call ourselves the dollar sign bean the more mm -hmm. we're contributing to our own like erasure and censorship yeah and it's a shame I'm glad that people have found like identity in it and and like that it's a joke and they think it's fun like that's no no problem I guess they're making a positive thing out of a negative thing but it just like really it pisses me off that we even yeah. have to do it in the first place it's like we're always told to believe and a lot of people like I didn't identify as lesbian for a while because like we think it's a dirty word or yeah. that it has negative connotations so I just think it's like I guess I'm just over it I'm over people having to censor themselves and it's the yeah. same thing I referenced in that TikTok like when black creators talk about white supremacy, they also mm -hmm. have to do the same thing of like choosing different symbols instead of the letters so that their video doesn't get, because black creators videos are constantly getting taken yep. down in the first place. Um, yeah. So I just, I guess we're playing the game that TikTok is making us play. I just wish that we didn't have to. Well, it's playing the game of censorship. And I think the TikTok consumers, people watching these videos are already, it's almost like Google ads or Facebook ads, or even Instagram ads, like people don't even realize that they're ads, because their brain has just normalized it, and they don't see it anymore. So I feel like mm -hmm. with the censorship on TikTok, not just with the LGBTQ plus community and the BIPOC community, but just in general, like, you know, just the word sex, right? Like using the asterisk sign or using the weird E thing, or using mm -hmm. SEGGS, like it's yeah. all censorship in general which is a whole nother thing because obviously for decades, violence, you can watch so much violence, but when it, anything becomes sexual, it is somehow inappropriate, but violence is mm -hmm. not inappropriate, which is just an entire country based off of violence and wars. I mean, we literally yeah. are a country who came from war, like the revolutionary war and the pillage. civil war. Yeah. Conquer, yeah. you know, what is it called? Uh, oh, Manifest Destiny. Yeah, Manifest Destiny, yeah. Western colonization. I mean, we have just so much rooted in it, you know? And like, it makes total sense that people don't see that violence is 
inappropriate, but somehow Mm -hmm. sex and sexuality. And I think that just goes into the church and how big it plays into, you know, this church and state is separate. That's fucking bullshit. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? I could talk about the separation of church and state for hours. It (sighs) makes me so angry and the hypocrisy behind it. And I know that, I know that as users, I'm like, I don't know about you, but like, I'm in the creator fund. So I understand that I make money off of TikTok and I have to abide by the rules. And if I wanted to not be censored, I could just talk on Instagram or whatever, but it's, I'm going to be pissed about it. And I'm fine with being pissed about it. Um, Hopefully they change some of that. Um, Facebook bans. So after the 2020 election, Facebook announced that they're going to like ban political ads, no matter what the affiliation is. And it's, that's their approach to stopping things like white supremacy and the insurrectionists and things like that from happening in the future. But that's basically them saying is like, we're not going to do the work. We have all this AI and we have all this incredible technology, but we're not going to use it to filter out who's using this for good and who's using it for bad, which is just lazy governance. And once again, TikTok, we, you can curate an entire for you page for me based off of things that I've liked or mm-hmm. spent time looking at, but you can't decide that me calling myself a lesbian is, yeah. is okay. And someone saying like, lesbians yeah. are disgusting isn't okay. It's yeah. just, it's lazy and it's stupid to me. Oh yeah. But, but like the, and also I'm not just here to play devil's advocate, but I just see it on like such a global, not global level, but national level. Cause like bad press is still press it's still getting attention and the app wants you to stay on and it wants you to watch. So it doesn't matter if it's good or bad because it's attention. And Mm -hmm. we have deemed bad attention is still attention. And so these apps that are making money off of people staying on the app, watching ads, just in general, just all of international social media, like they Mm -hmm. don't care. Like that's why like trash shit is so great. You know, like what's Trisha, whatever, who's like always the YouTuber who's always in shit with like, I can't even think of the names because I don't even get on it. But like Trisha Paytas, but like she was, she was with like Jason Nash. She was part of like the vlog squad, but she commented on one of my anxiety videos once um, calling me a godsend. Yeah. She was like, actually, you know what? To be fair, I think that they are using she, they pronouns. Um, And so they commented oh, say, they commented saying like um you're a godsend this and then quoted part of what I said um and like sent a bunch of like emojis and I was just like oh no Trisha Paytas please don't no like this isn't for you <laughs> um but there's a lot people have asked me about my opinion on them because they are part of the LGBTQ community mm-hmm. and they are valid in that yeah but they're of course but, they doesn't are mean con- you're a good person though you could still be valid mm-hmm. in your identity but you could still be a shitty person exactly <laughs> like just because yeah, you're like, gay doesn't mean you're a great person I feel like <laughs> yeah and like I'm not like into like drama I'm not gonna like spend too much time on this but yeah, that's fine um yeah. the way I responded to it was basically like people who are not supposed to be giving them forgiveness are giving them forgiveness like so anytime yeah. that they're anti-semitic non-Jewish people are like oh it's okay we forgive you we stand you yeah. and like whenever whenever they're like trans you know it's just this isn't for you to forgive and that's how they continue to have the platform and they're good at their job they're they they get the bag so yeah it's like people forgiving them, but... JK Rowling like oh it's okay for gays but like ugh, trans people what the fuck you know yeah, what I mean no. it's like no no that's not your place to forgive yeah but yeah I just I guess any press is good press these days apparently apparently but like it's funny because like when you had said like you didn't like that they commented on your posts and it's like because they have a reputation right like a bad reputation it's if like Lundy commented on your post and you're like ew, <laughs> ew. Yeah. Like, d- don't no no like I don't want and you to stand me <laughs> I gotta be honest I don't like I know who that is like I know their face like I don't know anything about I don't know them I know that there's like so much drama in the lesbian yeah. world I just know that they're what toxic like a bad person I yeah. I'm not familiar not, okay not a not a not a not a good person um okay but I mean everyone has a right to change that's like a, a recent obviously a recent thing so it's I don't feel like that's what I hate about like obviously like cancel culture and stuff like that like I think people should be held accountable for their actions and like obviously in the moment but like people can change like mm-hmm. years down the road I don't really think people should have that held over their heads and I definitely fucking hate when people go back in time like 10 years ago and like dig up something that someone said that was like bad you know what I mean 
Cause mm-hmm. like it was, it's, it's, it was bad, but it was apparently like, you know, at the time, like more acceptable at the time, but now is bad. Yeah. And, and I just think people are doing that to dig up drama. It's like, people are different from 10 years. Like when I was 16, I was a fucking asshole. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, you know, I, it's, it's hard. Yeah. I, I get that. I think some things are like, not, I mean, like what only Jaya said, I think is, is reasonable to be pissed about. Um, oh, what did she do? I didn't hear. What What are her pronouns? Is it she, her, she, they? I do not follow them, but we could use them just to be okay, safe. Okay, we we'll use them. Um, okay. I'm, just, I'm not sure. I don't really, I'm not even familiar with the user. I just follow a lot of Black creators who have responded to what she said and, or with, to what they said. And I don't want to repeat it. It was just very racist. Oh, yeah, and it that's was fine. Like, vi- like violent in a way. Um, uh. And so it wasn't just them like, you know, using the N-word in a rap, and not that that's okay either, yeah, yeah, but it yeah. wasn't that situation. It was, like, meant as an attack. Um, yeah, so nice. I think, like, things like that, even though it was however many years ago, things like that, I think, are worth it, but in terms of cancel culture, I think that the first step should be education, mm-hmm. um, and then if they just refuse to be educated on it, like Trisha does, then, yeah. then, then that's when it's like, okay, you no longer deserve your platform. Yeah. That's how, I, that's my view on it. I think there should be accountability first. Like I think accountability and then education. And also I think it's like age plays a factor. Like if you're, if your brain's fully formed, AKA you're 25 and up, like, I just think you should know a little bit better. You have more mm-hmm. history, more experience. You're out of high school. You've, you've probably moved like, well, hopefully like you've done some of experience and stuff like that. I think people that are in high school, it's really hard. Like I remember when I was in high school, I was in a rural conservative area. didn't have a lot of diversity and of opinions, thoughts, people in general. So mm-hmm. like with the, not that I'm saying what she did was wrong, but isn't she like 18 or something? Who, she's who? young. She's I young? think, I think my age, I thought like 20, I thought like 23, but Oh yeah. I That's, could, once again, I don't even know that. Young. I, I don't know. Yeah. But I look young. I don't know. But, uh, how old are you? I'm 26. Okay. You look, you look about 26. Oh, thanks. Is it the crinkles? Or the no, like you, I don't know what, like <laughs> my partner's 26 and they think that they're like so old. I'm like, I'm 24. Like you're only two years old. Like there's, it, I, I don't know. I feel like there's not, I don't see a difference between 24 and 26 or even like 20. I don't know. I don't either, but I think it's the health insurance. When you realize you have to be on your own health insurance, shit gets real. And then I you start so, itemizing. Yeah. You're like, I need an itemized list of what's going on. I need, That's I need true. to figure out, you know, can I forego this? Can I do like, there's just, <laughs> then you become really aware. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. I'm still on my dad, thankfully. Oh, enjoy it enjoy every bit of it I am yeah I swear then you don't have to worry about getting a job with good insurance or deciding mm-hmm. to quit to work for a startup and have to get independent insurance which sucks I mean I'm working for a startup oh nice I work for a startup part-time and I bartend so there's definitely no benefits in that yeah and then I make money off of TikTok money there you go the creator fund I, I make some change I originally got in it but I heard it depressed views initially and so I got out of it and I haven't gotten back in it and so I don't know if they changed that like have you seen any decrease in views at all like for instance getting in the creator fund not really like my content is pretty like um what am I trying to think of like hit or miss with when, yeah. when it comes to like actually blowing up blowing up yeah um I'm my like growth on TikTok is new I in December I had like at the beginning of December I think I had like 20 15 20 thousand followers okay and it's about to be March and I'm about to hit 100 thousand so I think nice. that's like a quick growth and I oh, yeah. if, I feel like if I if my account was being like suppressed I feel like that wouldn't happen yeah um and I've had like right. viral videos um, go and I think it just depends on what I'm talking about like some things people really like and some people I get like steady views from my like loyal followers um, but I haven't seen anything like wild no okay but I've heard, maybe. The, I've heard the same thing yeah I'm like maybe it was at the beginning because like I ri- I immediately got out of it because I was like I value growth and like getting followers more than like getting a few cents and stuff like that and so but then I'm like I missed out on probably like a few hundred bucks I don't know how I feel like it's 
not a lot of money in the creator fund, but like with all of the stuff I had, I probably missed out. And I'm like, damn, should I get back into it? Is it worth yeah, it? I don't know. I'm not as educated. I, and everything, I did read the fine print just because I'm like always paranoid about like, I don't know, I want to know what I'm getting into. And they do say that like all of that is false. Of course, they're going to say that, but they say it's like all false. I have heard from people that they genuinely think that, but I know big creators, like verified creators who are in the, in the, um, in the creator fund and they seem to, to be doing fine. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe I'd be yeah. at 200,000 if I wasn't in it. Uh, I, 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 don't, it but. I don't know. I mean, I, I was growing pretty fast in the summer, but I also like my content has changed and I, I don't upload as much as I used to, but I'm like, mm. I was like going to wait for the TikTok marketplace when you hit a hundred K. And then I was like, I thought I would hit that? it by now. It's like a different thing. So when you hit 100K and then you have to have other satisfied things. So there's a creator fund, which is just a lower threshold that you have to hit to like get into it. I don't know what that is, but um, it's a 10. Okay. And then, yeah, it's a hundred. And then there's a couple other things that you have oh. to hit. Um, so that could be something once you hit it. But uh, I had no idea. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool shit. But uh I don't know where we're going with that. We went off on a tangent. <laughs> we did because we're pressed. Um, pressed. I am pressed and depressed right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm I equally pressed as I am depressed. <laughs> yeah. We were just talking about cancel culture. I think all of that just came from the little dollar sign bean thing. And then yeah. we started talking about Trisha Paytas, which can really take you down a. Yeah. Oh, so I wanted to add that, like, when you were talking about violence and how that's all okay, the yeah. plastic surgeons. Who have who are on TikTok? Have you gone down that rabbit hole? I've seen some people. I've seen this one guy who like uh, has celebrities before after pictures and tells you what they've gotten done. But I haven't like done. I don't. I'm sure there's like botched videos where people are like doing like surgical shit and stuff. I'm in. I'm in the <laughs> operating room with them. I went on like a 3 a.m. rabbit hole of plastic surgery, and you see, ev- like they're literally removing fat and skin there's like ones where they're like doing surgery on the eye and taking out and putting in breast implants they're like taking out breast um and like I'm like it's bloody it's gory I'm like how is this allowed and I'm glad that like there's exposure to it if people want that education but I think it's more entertaining than anything and I'm like how is that okay but strap on is not okay because they (laughs) deem it because it's it's sexual versus non-sexual because it's just a breast because they're just doing a surgery so apparently it makes up for it if there's some blood and gore because it's not someone stabbing someone. But yeah. here's, here is the thing, the ticket. They slice them. Yeah, but here's the ticket. Have you seen the videos where they do crime scene cleanups and they have it on TikTok? There's a whole fucking realm where they go into people's houses of people that have died and have like sunken into the ground and meshed with shit and like homicides. And they go in and show you a crime scene cleanup. On I am a a true crime fanatic and I don't know how I haven't ended up on that I wouldn't want to I would be intrigued but I haven't even been on that side of TikTok no I have no oh my god (laughs) apparently if violence isn't happening in like directly but if you can see past shit of it it's okay if you could just see blood splattered on the walls and fucking sludge on the ground that used to be a person apparently that's okay because it's after the fact (laughs) you can't talk about sex after the fact though but no I'm going to cross my fingers I don't end up on that side of TikTok because I feel like it would be pretty bad for me because I would be like very interested. Also, I just love cleaning. Yeah. Like I love yeah. to clean and I love cleaning videos. So I feel like I'd be like, ooh, watching that wall go from bloody to not bloody would be so good for my anxiety. But mm-hmm. no. It's so satisfying. I've seen that stuff too. Like especially like when people flip houses and demo stuff and they're cleaning and they're just making it nice. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. It's great. It's better than cutting sand. Yeah, I don't need that. I want to vacuum a carpet. I don't, I don't need, mm. I don't need, what is that thing that everyone's upset? Like slime? Oh yeah, the slime, yep. Yeah, I don't need that. <laughs> I, I want to see someone get a really rough stain out of their carpet. <laughs> I do. I, I genuinely do. It's like the best, oh, it's the best. I could, I love cleaning. I recently have gotten on some sort of TikTok where people are like, and one of them was like a spoof video where they like spilled a bunch of shit on their carpet and like people were waiting for it to be cleaned up and it like never happened. But this one fucking dude, this one like kid, it was a kid who was like, this is how you get cream cheese out of your carpet. <laughs> I you saw that, that one. He was just 
taking a plastic spoon. Yeah. And he's like, you take blue dyed dish soap to the carpet. I'm like, your mom's going to kill you, kid. Yeah. I think he was waiting to. He's like, my mom's asleep. I was like, your mom is going to destroy you. I didn't stick around long enough to see if he actually got it out. I was just like, I don't want to see mayo in a carpet. I'm just not going to stick around for this. He did. He got it out. He did a good okay, job. Good. I mean, you'll never know once it dried. He didn't show us when it dried, but like he, he got it out. He did a good job. Good for him. But I just don't like it. Cause it's like you fucked it up in the first place. Like it'd be different if like it just happened and you're like, here's how I fixed the problem. It's like, well, you created the problem, but then you fixed it. It's like the old like infomercials. Like what was it like sham wow? Where it's like, imagine you drop your entire fish tank. Here's the sham. It's just like impossible situations. It's the same yeah. energy. Yeah, it's like you're you're creating a problem just to solve it, but it, it, that's marketing, I guess. True. Oh, making people feel like they have Genius. problems, making yeah. oh oh, this is a whole other tangent. Making women feel like they have problems, and then giving them makeup and shape, like you know, like yeah. razors to fix it. Oh, oh. capitalism. I hate that. Yeah, it's everyone feels like they have a fucking problem. The kid's a genius, I guess. And people I realize made it. Some money off of that video. You need to be eighteen to be in the creator fund, which is BS. Ah, uh, yeah, but I mean, you could lie. You be able to make money. I do just true. lie. That's true. I have to fill out a uh, a W two. I have to file taxes for my TikTok revenue. Oh dang! I know that if you yeah, if you make over six hundred, well, I just know that from like when I worked as self employed and had to fill out a ten ninety nine. If you make over six hundred, mm-hmm. you have to pay taxes on it. Yeah. Mm. We'll see. Yep, yep, I just yep. thought that was funny. I'm like, what is my life? You can itemize your deductions, itemize your internet. You can put a bunch of shit on there. H&R Block. Yeah, I know like you sense. can do that, but that seems like a lot of work. I think I'll just like pay whatever they need me to pay. <laughs> or maybe they'll give me money. I don't it is know. worth it. I swear to God, it's worth it. Like when I had to do I my like own I'm taxes. Scamming. No, you're not scamming. The government is scamming you. And they are allowing you to deduct things from your taxes. It's legal. This is not illegal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I filed my own taxes since 2016 because I've okay. been working. And so I was in college in 2016. But like, even then it was like, okay, you're a student, like put up all like your, like add up all your textbook costs and like, we'll deduct this and this. And I'm like, that's a lot of work. I'm just going to skip that part of it. <laughs> but I've always gotten like big tax returns. So that's I've good. never lost money on it, but I'm just like, I am, do I really need to go through my receipts and see how much money, like I spent $2,000 on textbooks. Let's just call it even. An estimate. But, or you can just like, I usually keep like a, an Excel file of shit, but that's just because I'm you are 26. Yeah. I have an Excel file and I have a budget on my, cause I like, I gotta have a budget now, man. I don't have a nice corporate job anymore. Shit. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I, I miss making money. Yeah, that was really fun. But um, putting up with stupid bullshit wasn't. So I was like, I'm going to quit. Um, that's what I'm going to do. But uh, <laughs> Tell me about the royalty thing. Because like, I've seen this so much, right? Like go off queen, go off king, that kind of thing. And people, I feel like are trying to offset, you know, using really gendered pronouns. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, it is still gendered king and queen yeah. is you it's know still gendered yeah I have a lot of opinions about it I'd love to dive right in and yeah. first and first and foremost I have a speech impediment with, with ours that is mm-hmm. like pretty much gone but some with things like that where it's first and foremost to ours I just like sound stupid for a second it um, doesn't but- sound it doesn't <laughs> sound it does, I don't register it because I feel like I hear oh, okay. people when it's like the like I don't know core car or something I don't know yeah like I would say my sister's names are Rachel and Sarah so I used to I would growing up I had it gone by the time I left elementary school but I would say like Rachel and Sawa but I like went to speech therapy for it but Mm -hmm. if there's words where it kind of gets tangled up it'll slip up but anyway that's what just happened um my sister did that it happens my sister had a speech impediment and then I had to go to we both had to go to speech therapy she had to go because she actually had a speech impediment I had to go because I yelled so much that I had nodules on my vocal cords and so I had to be taught how to be quiet were you just an angry kid no, I just wanted people to fucking listen to me, I guess. And I always Are had a raspy. <laughs> no, I was the oldest. <laughs> and I had a raspy None voice. Of that makes sense. 
I don't know. It doesn't make sense. But I had a raspy voice and I was just a spaz and I was loud and I wanted to keep up with the grownups because the grownups in my family are just loud. We're just notoriously just fucking loud. And as a kid, no one listens to you, just in general. So like, you know, I'm a little girl and no one fucking listens to me. So I'm going to yell. And then I got yeah. nodules on my vocal cords and then I wasn't allowed to yell and I had to be quiet. I had to play this stupid game where we had to be quiet and shit like that, which I don't even want to go into the whole <laughs> women needing to be quiet thing. But yeah. like, and now I have a podcast. So fuck you. Yeah. Fuck them. All, like so, so many things <laughs> Tangent, just came up. Sorry. You just reminded me of Pitch Perfect. <laughs> like the nodes on my vocal cords because pitch perfect I credit to I'm not gonna say making me gay of course but like influencing my gay awakening I saw every pitch perfect movie in theaters and I know not every like I know this isn't a common lesbian experience but every time I left the theaters I would leave a little gayer because anyway um it's the nodes it's the nodes and you said um Sunday dinner earlier are you Italian we're German oh okay Sunday dinner is like very much an Italian I don't know tradition I think it is I think some like I mean there's many traditions around food in general but I feel like the Italians really take the cake um take the chicken cutlets on that yeah (laughs) (laughs) the lasagna the funfettis honestly I think the funfettis is just a, a Jersey Shore thing I don't know if it's an actual Italian thing but I don't think so I don't know what even you're referring to but um but yeah so the the royalty thing I'm trying to like organize my thoughts because I have so many thoughts on it oh you're so good I'll start with I'll start with point a parasocial relationships (laughs) this is my thesis the need the need to call anybody on the internet whether they have two followers or two million the need to call them royalty I feel like Mm -hmm. perpetuates parasocial relationships where you're like worshiping this person Uh, okay who like yeah like they may have like great points that they're making you might look up to them they might be a great role model but like they are why do you need to be calling them king or queen yeah like that's that's like one thing because then it's like then in the comments it's just all them and you're hyping them up and that might make them uncomfortable it might feed their ego too much Mm -hmm. so that's just like a weird feeling I have about the whole royalty names point b when people I think if people cut it out now but when people were trying to think of a gender neutral term for it they were like oh monarch and it's like why are why are we glorifying monarchs we don't like them we don't like royal highness or something like (laughs) Like, that yeah, it's like or just go off like, royalty or something. Like, go yeah. off dictator. <laughs> like, go off totalitarian. Like, yeah, it's like, we don't like these things. <laughs> Thanks, Mussolini. So that's another point. And then the other one is just like, when people phrase those questions, a lot of the times they do say like, what do you prefer? Like, can I call you this? But a lot of the times it's like, so what are we supposed to call non-binary people? Like, what's the alternative? And that just feeds into the idea that all non-binary folks are a monolith and that Mm -hmm. what what goes for one person goes for all of them same with the pronouns and same with like oh like people will be like hey like is it okay if I call non-binary people handsome or beautiful I'm like I don't know you can call me handsome or beautiful but like I can't speak on behalf of all non-binary folks yeah um so the way people phrase those questions is kind of just weird um so that's a general catch-all term I think is people are looking for a catch-all term which I get it and I mean, it's they, them, because you can just say they, them to anyone because you, you use they, them in general, like they're over yeah. there. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, like or he's over there, like they're over there, that kind of thing. So I feel like it's that's safe. such a good default because like, no one's going to be like, I'm offended. You, you called me they or them or, the, you know what I mean? Like no one. Unless you, you're I, like a Republican. I don't know. I, but then they have to be aware of the fact that people say they, them, you know what I mean? Then you're giving them too much credit. Because they're yeah, aware of it, and now they're pissed off. It's like they're not yeah. even fucking. They don't even. They don't even think we exist. So yeah. like, and 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 the idea that you're asking for someone to speak on behalf of all non, like literally, the word is non-binary. It is not binary. There's not one specific thing. And mm-hmm. so, like, to to think that you can be like, oh well, what are we supposed to call? I don't know. It just it's very weird to me. Um, and the whole non-binary thing is like some people feel more attached to feminine but are still non-binary or more attached to masculine 
And so like <clears throat> one person's going to want to be called handsome and one person doesn't want to be called handsome because maybe they don't have gender euphoria when it comes to like masculine presenting qualities. And okay. so that's where I think all of that, it kind of lives in the same realm of why are we demanding non-binary folks to let us know what is it like just just call me it was the same thing when people were you like just say go people, off with a smiley face you don't even yeah, have to like, do that you don't have to specify exactly i just yes. i feel like i don't specify like i don't really specify i don't know i just don't feel like i do it That's and sometimes i'll say like hot boy but with a boi you know what i mean because it's not yeah. boy <laughs> yeah and and people would um same with when people used to comment saying like oh go white they them that's my favorite white they them and I'm like the fuck? what the fuck <laughs> like that's so like they would do it to me they did it to a bunch of other creators and it was well-intentioned like it wasn't out of hate but it's like yeah. you're calling me an object well like, they're basically I go, like, like I typically watch like black creators like maybe black non-binary folks but like oh man this white they them is fucking going off you know what I mean? Which, yeah. from a, if they, if, and I'm assuming they're from the BIPOC community or else if they're not, that's just fucked up. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just kind of hard because then it's like, well, like we are in the majority, but it's still feeling like you're objectifying me. Like, oh, you know, they're white, but like they're fucking funny. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. normally do this. <clears throat> yeah, you can make fun of me for being white. Like I will take that every second of every day like that is fine by me but like the object like the uh idea of like they them because I don't you use she her pronouns yeah like I wouldn't comment on your content and be like that's my favorite she her yeah you know yeah. like you would it's the like, alternative right. would be like that's my favorite girl or that's my favorite creator so just be like that's my favorite person that's my yeah. favorite creator those that's are my all favorite creator people. that's my favorite yeah. queer yeah but I think that and people even take issue with queer, which is something I did a deep dive onto. I did like a poll on Instagram because it still is a slur for people. I like using queer. I think it's I a positive too. term. A lot of some people, uh, I, I did a poll and it, I got a lot of responses from it. And a, the overwhelming majority said that they don't see it as a slur, but then there's some folks who did and I don't want to invalidate those experiences. Oh, yeah, but yeah. I think queer is, I think queer is positive, but yeah. And then too. so my point c i think i'm on c or d being i'm pretty sure that saying things like king queen cis girl like g-u-r-l is a-a-v-e yeah. which we shouldn't be using anyway so i think those are i think it's, that's enough reasons for mm -hmm. us to just like stop calling people royalty also i'm like yeah. i'm not worthy of being called royalty i'm literally a broke 24 year old person that's like but kind you of think that okay you're sometimes. not deserving of it though <laughs> That's, that's, you think you're not deserving of it, but they but think that you are. Yeah, which is mind boggling. It's weird. I don't even, I don't think anybody, is even if you it. have like 5 million followers, I don't think that you should yeah. be getting called like king or queen. I don't know. You that just goes into the whole, is the monarchy bullshit in general, you know, which I think it is. You're just like, yeah. You just, oh, this is the family. That's royalty. That's it. Yeah. I don't know how it works back in the British days they were just like this is the one for all of eternity yeah, I don't know for all for forever fuck everyone else this is the they've got to be pretty miserable I have to imagine they're pretty that. miserable I would hate I would hate being a part of that family I mean you think of all of the cheating and all the scandals and you couldn't get divorced and marrying people outside of royalty and then having like even back then you're like I can't have to, I only have to marry my cousin I don't get anyone else yeah. I got I got I got fucking five people to work for one has a kidney disease one can't get out of bed because it has asthma because they're all fucking incest they're inbreds you know what I mean mm -hmm. it's nuts it's nuts I think that Prince Harry and uh, Meghan Markle are doing it right they're like yeah we're gonna peace out of here because he does no responsibilities unless his brother dies right yeah. and even if he does it's got to wait till his grandma dies then his dad then his brother and then him so like unless a plane crash takes them all out and I would just feel real bad for the whole family Harry in general because he's not yeah he doesn't want to fucking run that thing yeah he wasn't no. he wasn't bred for it no he was bred to be the fuck boy I love that for him yeah and Megan sure as shit I mean I don't think the family likes her which really sucks because like She's Apparently dope. no one likes Americans, but like, like she's literally, I don't know if she's, is she the only person of color in that whole family? Cause like, we need to keep her around. So. 
<laughs> there needs to be more diversity, which is, I mean, just diversity of genes, you know, we need to really <laughs> fish out all the incest. But <laughs> Do they, we need to take there, care of that. Is there first. a lot of incest in the, in the royal family? Is that like a real thing? That's literally a real thing. Like, and I think it was just oh. always a thing, not just with royalty, but high status people thought that their blood mm. was pure, pure. And so murking yeah. it kind of like Harry Potter with like muggles and stuff. Yeah. They well, thought they would work it. Yeah, that and also, um, why can't I even think of the name? Game of Thrones. Okay. Like, like, yeah. Did you watch Game of Thrones? I do not. Oh, okay. Well, the Lannisters, like, there's incest in that family. And it's basically just, like, keeping the bloodline pure. Yeah, that's, like, a legit that's thing. Do. That's why, like, all of the Egyptians, like, King Tut and all of them were, like, deformed. Like, King Tut, I think, lasted till, like, maybe 18 or something. But he was, like, mm. so severely deformed because they didn't realize that you had to diversify the gene pool to, like, extend your life and stuff Poor like guy. that. And they all just, like, fuck their cousins and stuff. And, like, high-status people would do it. Because, like, then you know who where, who you're getting and whatever. Um, yeah. I don't know when they stopped it. I don't know when they stopped fucking their cousins. But, you know. Hopefully, it's, <laughs> hopefully they did. Yeah. I mean, I think there's some more. I think there's some better bloodlines in the last maybe, like, 50 to 100 years, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just psyched. I just want more Americans in the royal, in the royal family. They're just... <laughs> really yeah. spice it up but um yeah, i agree but yeah that's so that's my take on the like whole king queen what can i call you thing that's what presses me about it i get that i get it and it's like it's just like putting people as like a status above you putting people on a pedestal which yeah. is never good which is just like a whole it's just like our whole life is revolved around caste systems even though we're not in feudalist society anymore like there's still like mm-hmm wealthy people there's elite people it's never just like even playing field in general and anything you know mm-hmm. there's always competition of appearance and being prettier or smarter or more athletic or more artistic yeah. or wealthier funnier you know like there's I feel like there's always going to be that competition and since we're a society that thrives on competition instead of collaboration like yeah absolutely that's why when people like say stuff like I love you I'm in love with you or like I don't know whatever they say to me I every single time like no no you don't you don't know me you could meet me at a party or on the street and I could be the worst person you've ever met like you only like you see what I curate and I'm not the worst person I'm a good person but like I curate my content I don't like filter myself and talk about what I want to talk about but it's very specific um and so when people are like oh like I love you I'd love to like date you I'm like probably you probably wouldn't you probably would not want that uh, and I let them know straight up because I would never want to like participate in a parasocial relationship when I see creators yeah. like people comment on their videos saying like I love you and they say love you back I'm like oh, don't yeah, say do that. that to them don't say that to them it's no. it's fucked up and some creators wind up grooming and that's how it's just it's toxic I don't think people should say that back to them I worked at a preschool and so a lot of the kids this was back in college and you know the kids you know would be like oh my god I love you so much like I missed you like because I saw them more than you know they saw their parents a lot of the time Mm -hmm. because it was 12 hour days and it caught me off guard I'm like you don't know me little girl and I don't know you and saying I love you to someone that's in preschool, like that you're teaching, it's like weird. It's very weird. Yeah. And I was like, I'm very fond of you. <laughs> that's all I would yeah. say. They'd be like, I love you, Miss Bree. And I'm like, I'm fond of you, Rachel. I yeah. really am. <laughs> now go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would just say, you could hit them with like, like you're kind, you're smart, you're important. Like yes. make sure they, you know, if they're not getting it at home. But yeah, I agree. Validating the whole... them in other ways. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. rough. And I've seen that too, like where people will be like in doing that and I just don't like it. And then sometimes it kind of slips out where like, love you guys, blah, 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 that kind of thing sometimes. And I'm really weird about the word love. Like I don't mm. say it freely. It takes me a long time to say it to partners. I've only said it to one partner. Wow. One partner. I say it on the second so. week. <laughs> That's gay. <laughs> I'm so gay. I'm what I think is funny is that like and whenever I talk about I never want this to seem like I I'm only saying this because I have the evidence in front of me that like I get simped over like in my comments and stuff I like hate the way that sounds but I always like to like play a joke on on like the people who follow me and like do say stuff like date me whatever I'm always just like I am a simp 
like I know that like I'm mask presenting yeah. and like all of this stuff but like I'm a simp I U-Haul uh-huh. I say I love you within the first month obviously not for everybody but I but my first girlfriend and like last girlfriend I've only dated one other uh per- non-man um I think I said I love you after like a month and a half and then this the person I'm dating now said I love you within like within like the first two weeks of knowing each other um I'm having a panic oh my god but like we mean it like and we said it like at the same time it was like very much like a yeah we just like looked into each other's eyes and like I knew they were gonna say it and so they were like, I have to tell you something. And I, and I said, I know what you're going to say. And they were like, what? I was like, you love me. And they were like, yeah. Aww. I was like, I love you too. That's, see, <laughs> that's like, good though. And I feel like it can happen quickly. I'm just someone that like, it just doesn't. <laughs> like, I, I it, get it keeps it. me a little bit of a warm up because I have a more of an avoidant attachment. And I so it takes me a little bit. It takes me at least three months to, yeah. to know but that I'm no in love judgment. with someone. I think that's more normal than what I just said. So no judgment. Yeah. Which it's fine. I think some people move faster. And for me, it's just like, love is like a weird word. And like, it takes me a while to say it. And when I say it, I fucking mean it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, absolutely. I, like if, if, if I love you, I love you. Like I love my like friends I've known for 15 years and like my family that's known me forever. Like you're in the inner circle. You've made it. You made it to the inner circle. Yeah. Now look at all of my trauma. Now that I told you I love you, <laughs> here it is. I was gonna, I was gonna say, now fight. <laughs> now like, fight me. <laughs> oh my god, that was like one of the things that I thought, and I don't think it's always a thing, but like, because you had talked about how you had an, an abusive relationship with um, a man that you had dated, and the last episode that I talked about. And I, there's still so much. I mean, I could have had a three part series on that fucking mm-hmm. episode. Like there was just so like after I was like, I could have said this better. That I could have said so many things better. But one of the things was like this person was like, I usually I usually can tell that I am in love with someone like after a couple days. And I was like, mm. you're like no, ah, okay. don't put that energy on me. Yeah, it was. And clearly it wasn't to me. I mean, clearly she didn't tell me. I mean, she didn't love bomb me and said, I love you after day two. Cause I made it very, I I made it very clear, not clear, but like in a previous conversation that it takes me a little bit. So like, if I hadn't said that, she probably would have maybe or, or not. But yeah, that stuff. I was like, like slowly back away. Yeah. I was, um, it was an emotionally, I like want to clear, it was an emotionally abusive. I was just gaslit the entire yeah. relationship. Um, it was a three year relationship, all three years, except like all years except for one of college. Um, but I was just gaslit and like lied to the entire fucking time, which is so annoying. But I, it, it's funny that we're like talking about saying I love you. I like made a TikTok once and I was like, funny things. And I think I'm going to do another one because people seem yeah. to like it. But I was like, funny things I put up with. And I specifically said funny things I put up with when I was heterosexual. And then everyone's like, this is so traumatic. Are you okay? And I'm like, these are the funny things. Like, I'm not talking about the traumatic things. If I was talking about the traumatic things, like I would have to put a trigger warning. But when I first said I love you to my ex, I said, um, I said, I love you. And then he said it back right away. Like we were like, it was after the bars, we were um, like in college together, we were drunk. And he said it back right away. And then the next morning he goes to me, he's like, we're in my dorm. And he was like, by the way, like what I said last night, don't expect to hear that a lot. I won't be saying that a lot. (laughs) I was just, I was standing there like, wow. (laughs) Like, were you like stunned? Like, were you just like, yeah, I was just like, the rest you know I was like obviously romanticizing it in my head I was we started dating, dating when I was like nine, 19 and like freshly 19 and so I was yeah. just like okay like whatever um but then he said it all the all the time he said it five times a day so he didn't even like stick with his word but it was just funny that and a lot of I think that a lot of stuff with him and a lot of other men who gaslight women like and I'm not making excuses for them whatsoever but like so many of the problems would be solved if they just went to therapy oh, if yeah. like men were if men were encouraged to talk about their emotions and go to therapy like he wouldn't have treated me the way that he did but mm-hmm. do you, what think, are you, gonna do you do? think he was a narcissist or do you think he was just really emotionally manipulative 
I don't think I know enough about the qualifications to be a legitimate narcissist enough to diagnose, but like, yeah. well, neither am I just maybe like s- learn narcissistic capabilities or yeah. narcissistic tendencies. He um, was very into status, like popularity. He loved like designer things. And I was like, I don't care. I shop at Target. And he was like rocking fucking like Louis Vuitton stuff. Um, yeah, that's that ticks a box for sure. Yeah, and would just like, you know, he would cheat and then lie with lie about it, get away with it. I think he like got off on the fact that he would get away with it. Um, you know, things like that. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. <laughs> it's not looking good for him right now. <laughs> no, it's not. And it sucks because like we did obviously share like I did love him. I like I did love him. Um we had great moments, but it was looking back on it, I'm like, why the fuck did you put up with that for so long? Yeah. I was a kid. What are you going to do? Yeah, I get that. It was that. like three years ago. It's like, <laughs> like one of those things that you don't realize. It, like for me, I didn't realize how bad it was until I got out of it. And it was like, it's yeah. not until like probably a month later. And then I was like, one thing hit the fan. And I was like, oh my God, what did I do? Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't even like a bad breakup or anything like that. Like, it was just like, oh, we're not compatible, sad, you know, got, get over it. And then I saw one thing and it knocked, it knocked the domino and I just exploded. And I almost yeah. thought, am I this person, like this obsessive, crazy person? And I'm like, if I was this obsessive, crazy person, then it would have happened at the breakup and I would have been yeah. obsessive and crazy, you know, because I was the one that was broken up with and got discarded. And so I'm like, I should have been oh. crazy at the start. Okay. You know what I mean? I should have been crazy yeah. at the start, but I wasn't. It wasn't until I realized that the whole thing was a sham and that every little thing just started coming into my brain, like all of these you things. Doing, like the calculations. The calculations started going. There were just X's and O's yeah. and zeros and ones. And it was just in my brain. And I like flipped shit. Yeah. And then it took me um, an entire month and then some more. And then I had waves of realizing things. And it's just like a whole fucking thing. So yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm not crazy. <laughs> You're not. I ended my relationship and I felt nothing when it happened. And I did because I mourned the relationship for like the last <laughs> year of it. We dated for three years, for almost three years. And I mourned it because I was like, everything he did was so upsetting to me. Like I would cry yeah. all the time. I would try to reason with myself for like why I'm staying with him. We were long distance for the last year because he had graduated and I was a senior and we lived six hours away. And like I broke up with, I, had no choice but to break up with him over the phone because the next time I would have seen him was my graduation weekend and what did it for me was like knowing that if I let him be a part of my graduation weekend where like we have our pictures together like if those are my going to be my memories I'm not like I'm going to be so miserable he's going to ruin mm-hmm. it for me and so I just like had to do it and then as soon as I ended the relationship like of course it hurt like we spent a lot of time together but as soon as I did it I was like I can finally be gay <laughs> yeah <laughs> I was like, I like went to Tinder and I was just like, yes, because I was like, I spent all four years of my life in college, like not like I was like make out with my sorority sisters when we were drunk, but like I wasn't it like, sounds like a sorority thing. Out. Yeah, I wasn't like, I wasn't in one, girl. but it sounds sounds like it. We it's pretty common, but I was just like, I get to be gay. Like yeah. I was so excited, and then it was like uphill, and then I came out. I only came out when I was twenty two, and I'm twenty four, so it it hasn't even been that long um, Me too. and then I like I came out and then I college. came out and it's been uphill from there now I'm That's a awesome. raging non-binary lesbian <laughs> really took a 180 from that sorority <laughs> oh yeah I love to see I that stuff it, yeah. though like the huge growth and in, in dips and stuff like coming from one end of the spectrum to the other end of the spectrum yeah um, and I mean I was not like a sorority girl like nothing like that uh, our sorority was pretty much like we were just a bunch of stoners kind of and like cool. we liked to party like it yeah. wasn't anything like delta kappa kappa <laughs> not nothing on them but kappa just, kappa new. I, went, <laughs> I went to like a small state school where all we did was like drink and do drugs so it wasn't like cool. we had sorority row anyway um but I liked my I genuinely liked the experience because I was like vice president and then I was president of all the sororities and like I got all this leadership experience and so like it was honestly a it was good. I didn't have to deal with all of like the toxic sorority stereotypical shit. Yeah. I almost thought about being in a sorority when I quit playing soccer because I played division one soccer for, and that was toxic. 
for sure. Yeah. Like 100%. I was going to play soccer in school and I was like, nope. Yeah. It's, uh, they don't tell you how uh, you're basically an indentured servant. So I was, um, I was warned when I visited school because I was going to go to school for soccer and someone like grabbed me like when they were taking me out to the bars and they were like don't do it and I was like okay fine yeah I mean they don't tell you they make you feel like you're privileged right that you're privileged to be like that because it is a status symbol to be an athlete you know what I mean but it's just like you know you can't make any money and you're you're an indentured servant because you're an amateur athlete and so there's just a whole lot of things about the system but in general girls when you get women when you get to like a level of like being a division one athlete, they're not nice. Cause like you get to that level, like, you know, there's a lot of alphas and they're not <laughs> nice at all. Um, not that I feel like I was bullied or anything, but I just, there's a lot of bitchy girls, a lot of crazy, mm-hmm. a lot of craziness. There's like 30 people on the team and yeah, 11 spots, <laughs> Yeah, you know? No. And it was just, it's just really petty and crazy. And I was like, get me the fuck out of here. And it's such a small, like it's no small town feel too. So I couldn't come out. I was like, fuck no, I'm not coming out. Cause I feel like someone's going to be like, I don't want to see her in the locker room. And, and it's going to be a whole fucking uh, thing, you know, conservative yeah. head coach. Like, ugh, like that just made me churn my, my stomach churn. I was like, there's just no way I can do that. Yeah. I don't have the confidence. Now I would be like, you're a fucking piece of shit. If you, you can get out. Like I would have been an asshole now, like knowing me Mm -hmm. now, I would have rose hell and started a fucking lawsuit and I would have done some crazy shit. But back then I would have been completely destroyed. Yeah. If if I wanted to fuck you, you, I would have fucked you by now. Like, (laughs) but like, really, like, honestly, I wanted to fuck you. You know it. (laughs) know it like you would you'd know it so yeah fucking get like get off your high horse oh I hate that mentality yeah that's I was like deathly afraid of like when I had realized it I was like there's just no way like there no there's no way that I will be able to do that and then I quit and I ended up doing a bunch of other things and I didn't end up coming out but like I definitely couldn't have faced teammates and face the drama that I hear so many people talk about. I'm like, I just don't want to be talked about. I don't want to have, I don't want to be taught, even if it's in a good way, if they're like, Oh my God, I'm so glad she came out. That's so great for her. I don't, I just want to be under the radar. Don't fucking talk to me. I want to be the rug. I want to be the fly on the wall. I don't want it to be a topic of discussion. Yeah. And you can't join the rugby team. Honest to God, we didn't have one. But I, oh, no. my friend growing up is a lesbian. And so it was nice. She came out freshman year of college and she was on the rugby team. She did it the president of the rugby team. And she Ooh. would invite me to their parties. And of course, I'm the straight ally that's like, I could totally see it. You know, I could totally see myself. Like, I wouldn't say no. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just an open person. Like, I was always that open person that like, if something yeah. came along, I'm not going to say no. And I still am that person. But like, it was just funny when I look at myself back then getting so excited to go to these parties and hang out with these, this, this culture that I knew nothing of, but I was so mm-hmm. intrigued by it randomly. Like there's so many cultures that I'm not intrigued about and I'm not looking to like, let me go, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. into here. Yeah. But for some reason I was like, I can't wait to get to know these women. Um, cause you're gay. Yeah. Cause I'm fucking gay. That's why. <laughs> I, I love so- it. I was so intrigued. I was always, I always so dress intrigued. a little edgier too. I'm like, I'm not going to be feminine. Like I would go to like, you know, the soccer boys parties. I'm going to be edgier. I'm going to wear my, my, uh, my hat backwards. I literally, this was I the funniest it. shit. I wouldn't dress what I thought was super gay. And this was one of the things that I would never do. Like when I was, I never wanted people to think I was gay at all. So I did like so mm. many things, but this was the one thing I was like, I can't wear my hat backwards. That's like the gayest thing ever. Like beanies depends on the brand, but this, this is very gay. I didn't start doing this until I came out. And then I was like, oh, I can do this now. Yeah. I love a backwards cap. I wore it to work yesterday. Yeah, it is weird. I mean, there were so many things that I avoided. My sister, who's only like one grade older than me, she's like 15 months older than me, um, came out as lesbian when she was a junior in high school and I was a sophomore, I believe. Um, and I was like, I'm an ally. Like, I got your back. Yeah, like, yeah. sister, like, no problem. Um, and I was just like, so strongly an ally. Not that I was like, not an ally before that. But um, 
yeah I don't know like I was just and then I didn't have my first like real oh my god I would visit my cousins in college in like Boston and Baltimore and like when I went to visit my my cousin and I think I was like a junior or senior and I visited her and she was however much older and like her friends like her college age friends would like make out with me which I'm thinking back I'm like "Eh, that's not not it was consensual but I'm like oh the age difference is weird but I'm like why are women attracted to me before I know that I'm attracted to women I don't know if like Mm -hmm. anyone else had that experience but I'm like women are drawn to me and I was like very still like I didn't look like this I was like feminine just looked like your run-of-the-mill like fit soccer playing long yeah. dirty blonde hair like there was I, I was like I must have this energy like I yeah. must have this gay energy and I guess I do uh, because I'm like anywhere I went I'm like and my sorority sisters like they didn't all make out with each other they all made out with me <laughs> and, but like but like I wouldn't be the one you dirty dog it. like yeah sure like I'd be drunk and like we'd like be dancing but I'm like and I mean this genuinely like they would just like make out with me and it would never go further than anything like that but I believe I have it like I must have just the gay energy the gay magnetism it's a thing though like even if you were more feminine presenting you know with long hair and different things like that and had different mannerisms I don't know but like there is a gay vibe regardless like there is just gay energy and like I didn't realize it. it until I like tapped into it and I honed my own and I don't know if it's mm. like subtle masculine hues or nuances. And I don't know how to describe it. It's just this essence. And mm-hmm. that's like the only thing I can like, and not everyone, never not every gay person has like super gay vibes. They're yeah, just like, sure. it's just so nuanced, but like, it's what you're attracted to. You know what I mean? And like, even if I am not attracted to someone, I can tell, like, I feel like that person's probably gay or like, yeah. You know, oh, that person came out. Okay. That kind of makes sense. Like Kristen Stewart was like, yeah, she just had, she was so feminine too, but it's like, she just had masculine. She had, I don't know if it's masculine. It's hard to describe the language. I don't want to like. She was like mysterious. She seemed like indifferent about men. men. Like, yeah. yeah, she dated Robert Pattinson, but it was like, okay, there were co-stars. Like, is there really yeah. anything there? Uh, but no, I get what you mean. Of course, feminine, uh, of course, masculine isn't in- inherently gay, nor is True. feminism or femininity not gay. Um, I, it's just like a It's vibe. hard to use restricting vocabulary. So I'm having a yeah. hard time captivating it. But it is just something that you're seeing that's not straight. It's just not yeah. straight. And even if, you know, it's just not straight. I don't know. That's the only thing I can think of. And now that I yeah. know it, I, and I remember like, just, and I had like, I don't know, like I had these weird things. Like I was like, I can't dress too tomboy when I'm going to like the baseball boys parties, you know what I mean? Because I won't be validated, you know, but I want to wear this, but I'm not going to be validated and I'm not going to look like some of the other, some of my other teammates or my other friends. And like, I still want to look hot. So like I would put on stuff that I, not that I was uncomfy wearing it, but I knew that I would be hot in it. And I was hot oh, in yeah. it, you know what I mean? But I felt more authentic wearing tomboy jeans and a fucking... You performing. It was, I was performing. I was performing. Yeah, so was I. I would wear... For validation my, like, from would, people that I didn't care about. I would wear like a low cut, like boobs to the chin. I have 36Ds. Now I'm like, chop them off, please. Yeah. But like, I used to be like, please look at my boobs. This is, this is my value. Yeah. Like that's, and I genuinely felt that way. Like this, if I have that out, I went to school where it we had lake effect weather. It was so incredibly cold all the time. Like I would walk through a snow blizzard in open toed shoes, a mini skirt, and like a low cut shirt with my boobs hanging out with no coat, just yep. bec- just so that like my boyfriend would think that I was yeah cute. Oh god, I remember doing that. You know, god like bless her. I just I remember doing that kind of shit, and it's I think it is a. I just thought of this and like realized this, but I think it is a blessing for queer people when they finally come out, they can not only unpack their own, you know, heteronormativity and their own, like just those kind of things, but like the gender norms and everything like that, like you can really see oppression with women so much more clearly because you are shedding these norms that you no longer affiliate with, you no longer are affiliated mm-hmm. with them. And I feel like it is harder for straight people to do that. They, they, I feel like, like there are experiences, but I feel like it is, we have such a different perspective as queer people, as queer women, you know, yeah. who are a double, double minority and some are triple, you know, I don't want to get into the, all of that, but like 
so yeah. much more uh, awareness of those things that it's hard to be aware of otherwise. And I think Absolutely. it's a blessing. I think so too. Mm-hmm. I think so too. Yeah. Because then I'm like, well, I'm used to the bail. Ga- it's, it's kind of like you get all the gazes. Yeah. Also, um, which I was recently talking about to, to someone with. But yeah, I, I agree completely. It opens up your, your eyes. It's just because heteronormativity is literally the norm. Mm-hmm. So anything that deviates from that, you kind of get this like outside perspective. And I'm like, fuck all of that. Yeah. <laughs> like I just so think much happier now. Queer people are more free. I think that's why, and not that it, this is the main reason, because there's always like heterosexuality or homosexuality is, you know, perverted and all of this stuff because of the Bible, because there were men fucking men on the battlefield because their women weren't allowed and they were like fucking kids and stuff, which is fucked up. And apparently mm-hmm. people somehow associated with it with all people you know and that's just a whole thing but like I also think that people are just more free to express themselves and so oh I came out as gay now I can you know come out as like someone who enjoys like the leather community and BDSM like it's so much easier to just be freer with it and more liberated with other things so it's like okay I come out and that's my sexuality and like okay well here's my sexual preferences not that you have to like voice them but like you're just more free to like be who you are and not like hide in the shadows because you're not confined to these ideals and if people don't like you like fuck it anyways like you know what I mean absolutely yeah I absolutely agree so. I was opened up yeah I was opened up to a lot of stuff after I came out it's a beautiful day it really it's is awesome. it's a beautiful day to be gay <laughs> it is it's a great day to be gay it's a beautiful day out today where do you where are you based in Cincinnati and it's been 50 degrees yesterday and today so I'm gonna go for a walk after this but that's why I, I switched from a beanie to a snapback I was like it's it's snapback weather I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, and, like, we have, like, 60-degree weather for the first time in a few weeks, oh. and it's so nice. It's so sunny. I think I'm going to, like, go hang out outside later today. You should. That's amazing. Yeah. I need to get some vitamin D. That's my, like, main goal now when I go on a walk. I'm like this, and I'm like, give me vitamin yeah. D so I don't get sad later on. Um, yeah. Maybe I'll still get sad, but not as sad. <laughs> <laughs> Nature's sad lamp. Photosynthesis. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's do a quick lightning round of fun questions are you uh ready to answer some questions really fast emily yeah i'm nervous but yeah okay um king princess or tegan and sarah tegan and sarah kaylani or Haley kyoko kaylani i love them both when they collabed but kaylani's music i, I like, like kaylani too Haley kyoko is kind of in the shadows now i feel like she's kind of off the grid i think she's going through something yeah i feel like she is which yeah. that's okay She'll probably get some good creativeness and artistic what she gets out of it, which is good. Yeah. Um, pain into pleasure. I thought one of your questions pain, was pain or pleasure. Is no, I was like, I was adding on like her pain can turn into like, like something creative, like pleasure. Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I got that. Not like pleasure. <laughs> yeah. That's way too personal. I, I know, I'm like- not ballsy enough to ask that. <laughs> I was like, okay, uh, all right, keep going. <laughs> Both. Um, <laughs> um, are you in the same words? Are you the a gay that squishes the bugs? Yeah. Nice. Well, I I let it outside. I don't kill bugs. Ah, that's cute. But I handle the bugs. I handle the bugs. You handle them. Um, do you, toilet paper? Do you roll it? Is it over or under for you? I think it's ridiculous that people have a preference. To be honest, okay. I I just. I throw it on. I don't think twice about it. It doesn't affect me. Okay. Zero I don't, bathroom habits. We're just no. fucking doing it. <laughs> it's going to the same place. Honest to God, though. Yeah. Honest to God. That's hilarious. Um, cake or cookies? Cake. <laughs> oh, flannels or Hawaiian shirts? Oh, Hawaiian shirt. All right. I look good in a Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. Here we go. Let's go. Favorite queer movie you've seen? Oh, shit. Um, I don't, there's so many of my favorite queer movies are not actually queer and it's just queer in my head. I really liked the portrait of a lady on fire and like Mm -hmm. below her mouth. Oh, I'm like blanking on every queer movie I've ever seen. That's okay. But those two, I like those two. Okay. Um, and then last song that you've listened to on repeat. Oh, um, the violent by Carol's daughter. Okay. I just like have it like on a loop. I love that song. I get obsessed I listen, with songs and I listen to them continuously until I can no longer listen to them. That's kind <clears> of what I do. Um, 
I just like will go through like the top 10 on my liked and just like read so like that one um I've been doing a ton of and then like the Lacey or sorry Lucy uh god damn what's the song Night Shift okay I've just been listening to that and I nice. just listen to Phoebe Bridgers like on repeat but I yeah. feel like I just listen to songs that give me little doses of serotonin until it just plateaus yeah. And then I get, and then I'm in this weird limbo where like no music makes me feel anything. And then I have to get a new supply of, <laughs> of songs that make me feel something. It's kind of fucked up, but. <clears throat> That's what I do with TV shows. So I do. I, I have shows. I used to be really bad into escapism with movies and TV. I was, I mean, I would sit and watch like four movies in a row and not get bored. And I think it's just because I was like escaping into like lives that I wanted to live similarly to people who like read books and for that same reason. But yeah, it's like, that's a lot of effort <laughs> and yeah. you're depressed. This is not, this is not how it works. And I would like really be like, what am I feeling inside of me and what's going to help that? So like, I'll watch mm -hmm. a sad movie or I'll watch a drama or I'll watch a fucked up family movie and make me feel better. Or I watch, I'll watch, you know, like a adventure where someone goes on an adventure yeah. You know, like there were so many things I used to do and I just don't watch. I don't have that relationship with TV as I once did, which is mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. But I was just like, that's probably a good thing. Yeah. I mean, escapism is just another distraction, just like anything. It's just like less harmful than some of the other ones, but still yeah. time consuming. For sure. Well, it's not funny, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Emily, thank you so much for being on. That was super fun. Um, if you guys enjoy this episode, please give us a follow on Spotify. We also have episodes that you can watch on YouTube. Um, that is it for this episode, my queers. Be you, be queer, stay safe. We will see you on the next episode.